You want some help? <laughs> Hey guys, in this video I'm going to discuss so what I went through with this player Switchback 800 CFI. CFI stands for Clean Fire Injection, which I think is the big problem with these 800 Polarises in that early 2010 to 2000, whatever, 14, 15. They just didn't run enough oil in them for emissions. I, the Polaris was doing it for the emissions. They simply did not run enough oil. And talking to Andy Dan, if anybody you know over in what Cannon Falls, Minnesota, he's the one that told me, when I rebuild this, just go ahead and put OEM pistons in it and turn up the oiler. Because it did last 4,300 miles. You'll see in the video what happens. And I I started out finding one more, one problem and went to another problem, which went to another problem. <sighs> so there's lots of information in here. We just rebuilt this 2013 RMK 800 also. Both snowmobiles were running good, pulling hard, didn't think there was anything wrong, compression was good. If your snowmobile has more than 3,000 miles on it, if your 800 Polaris <laughs> in these years have 3,000 miles on it, you better put some pistons in it. You do what you want, but we put OEM in this one, we put the, I think it was the SPI fix-it kit in this one. We'll compare them. I'll let you know. In, in a year or two, <laughs> how they held up. But that's what this video is about. It's very detailed about tearing this thing all the way down to the crank and sending the crank in even. Hopefully it helps you guys out. We literally just got this rebuilt last night. It was 9.30, 10 o'clock last night when we were putting this back together. So that's a fresh rebuild. That one I did this spring. So I was testing the motor mounts on the switch back here and I was like, oh yeah, it's a little loose. And then I went, oh, something's wrong. If you look underneath there, it's detached. So now I gotta figure out how to get this out of here or how to fix that. Yeah, I got the clutches all tore apart. Definitely have oil. For some reason there all the connectors it's all there there's zip tied there zip tied there all the connectors here this goes to the exhaust sensor i gotta get down underneath there uh pulled the gas all fuel pump that kind of stuff out of it and the gas gauge didn't work you know why look at that the float is absolutely can you see that full of gas probably why I didn't float this hose comes off goes down there this hose right here goes to the exhaust valves now we took that stuff out of there the four bar linkage whatever just pulled the bottom coolant line off and stuck it up there a couple of coolant lines here pop that off there's a bolt in there well, Take this out of the way. We gotta unplug that, I suppose. That needs to go there. And we're gonna take this one out there. These plug into there. So we unplug this from that. What? Oh. So you just unplug this thing? Ah, uh, yes. Lots of belt residue. Can't understand why it's blowing belt, can you? Okay, so just pulled that top of the air box off. Thermostat in this microbes? Yep, those gotta go. There's a gas line there that's gotta go. Took the thermostat hose off. Now we're gonna take that hose off. Okay, just took the throttle cable out of that. So the wiring harnesses, the only seem, place they seem to be connected together is this one right here. So if we unplug this, that can be thrown up there, and this can come out with the engine. Taking off that little coolant line that runs to the bottom of the tank there. 
I just took out that motor mount. Took this one out. Now I'm taking that one out. Well, now that the engine's out, you can see there's one broken bolt. That broken bolt's missing. Broken bolt. Broken bolt. I drilled the center out of the bolt after center punching it. Using an easy out. It's not coming out too bad at all. That's all that was in there. Well, that one's gonna come out for us too. Sweet. There will be two slightly used bolts on my Amazon account if anybody's interested. So I ran to the hardware store. Ooh, there it is, 10.9. The old ones were 8.8s. I wanted 10.9, a much stronger bolt. It's the equivalent of a, of a grade 8 bolt. And I see Matthew took this apart to see where our oil leak was. Cleaned it up a little bit. See that? That screw right there. I screwed that in two and a half turns to give it more oil so it doesn't run so lean. That's what everybody tells me to do. Anywhere from two to five. I did two and a half. So my professional TIG welder here is going to fill that in and fill that in so it sits, the engine sits flat on there again. I wish there were only had three of the strong ones, but the this side didn't break, so I really wanted strong ones on that side, and it got them. I think it's ready to go back in. I guess I'm supposed to pull the carbs off. I shouldn't call them carbs, throttle bodies, to see what the reeds look like. So I cut the zip tie that was holding that on there, and I'm zipping out the bolts. Piston shows a little wear at the bottom of the skirt. This one's showing more, more wear. So I took the head off, and the head bolts and the cover. Can't forget these O-rings. Right now I'm taking that off. Just pop the head off. Pull this wiring harness out of here. Bolts are out. So it's definitely, definitely scored. It's bad. It's bad. That one looks okay. That one, not so much. So I've decided to send this cylinder off, a monoblock as they like to call it, because of the scuffing. Okay, I'm going to have to take this stuff all off, the exhaust valves, the exhaust, the white pipe, fuel, that's to, yeah, all right. So I got her jammed in there pretty good, extra layer on top. So I guess going a little deeper on this. I'm going to take it completely apart. I'm going to pull the crankshaft. Send it in. Recoil's coming up next. 
So I just took the other piston off just now, just to get that off. Now I'm going to take the seal cover off so I can split this belt, chunks of belt. Looks like I'm going to have to take this motor mount off next. So I cannot, cannot, cannot forget this oil line that runs from there down to the, the bottom one here. That wouldn't be good to forget that. Kind of looks like the water pump's got to come off too. The case is going to split right through there. Looks like I need a water pump gasket. Okay, so I just blew it off. Uh, so all these bolts, I used a quarter-inch ratchet with a little cheetah pipe to break these all loose. Except for one. There is one in behind. Right there. So I'm going to have to take this off. So it looks like just an O-ring seals that on there. There's a slot in there, there must be. Yeah. So I took these all out. The, uh, what are there, eight bigger ones or longer ones? Oh, I didn't take them out, so there's actually ten. Two there, two, 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 two. And these are the two medium ones around the seal, and the four shorter ones go. So I just impacted the nut off the end of the magneto end here. This is a, a tapered shaft. Okay, took that off. Here's the stator. I'm going to have to take some three bolts out, I bet. Huh? Got oil in there. So this bearing feels pretty good, really. So it's out. Finally. I'm gonna replace this seal. That bearing I'm gonna go to a new style bearing. Just got a new seal there. Packaging it up, UPS it down, Okay, I wasn't aware of that, but apparently I got charged $16 for these Instapack things. Crank. Looks like the crank in the uh, $100 worth of motor mounts. $22 bushing for primary clutch. Bubble wrap. Bubble wrap. Ooh. Mono cylinder. Gasket kit. Just cleaning, cleaning, cleaning. Okay, so got the crankshaft in there. Put a seal in, put a seal over here. I just need to put some gasket maker on there and slap this together. And it can't have any leaks. So I smeared my gasket maker on there. I'm gonna put that on. I'm gonna finish putting these last couple bolts in here. And I gotta torque them down. Oh, this company sent all the torque specs for everything. Awesome. And it actually sent uh, the order in which you torque them. And the diagrams. So, went through and torqued all the crankcase bolts. Put this engine mount back on. 
put the oil pump back on because that bolt and this bolt see the crankcase is at 22 foot pounds and there's the pattern start at the middle and work your way out basically stator 12 pounds make sure your key is in there the half moon key torque this to 90. that looks like the water pump's next uh, i got that cleaned up this cleaned up i better find a gasket gasket kit looks like there's one right there oh so which bolts <laughs> I got fine. That almost looks like them right there. Why well, should have known those? Those are probably the intake read. Then I looked around and yeah, look at that. I labeled it water pump. Perfect. It looks like all the bolts are the same length. So now the water pump is only. <laughs> Gotta use the right socket. So the water pump is only like 10. Water pump, 10. And there's the sequence. Motor mount installed. Oil line reattached. Put the cover back on. So this is the new cylinder, or refurbished. You can see they did something to the skirts. They talked about reinforcing them. I don't know if they're sticking down farther. They put the pistons in there already. They put them in upside down. Uh, but they got to come out anyway to be put on the connecting rods. Sounds like, or near as I can tell in the directions, they already did the end gap on the rings. So that's great for each cylinder. So this piston has to stay with this cylinder, I'm guessing, and that one with this one. Well, I compared the, uh, that's a, a piston with this piston. They're basically identical. That's, uh, I mean, the, the, everything, the same height, everything underneath, everything the same. Bearings and wrist pin, circlips. Okay, first piston is in. We got it facing towards the exhaust, front of the motor. Time for the next one. So this is the way they sent the piston upside down in there. But I was trying to give a little demonstration of how tight it was. There's a little play. But not as much as the old ones. Look at all the shiny bells. Well, I did grease up the bearing. The wrist pin bearing? Greased it up. So the pistons are in. You gotta line up your gaps and your rings with those things there. So yeah, so the rings don't spin. They're both faced. They got the arrow on them. Face towards the exhaust. See that arrow? All right, right there. Okay, ready to put the cylinder on. Oh, you're supposed to grease up the bottom of these skirts. So don't forget your base, base gasket. And I'm going to grease up the bottom of this cylinder or piston before I put it in. One at a time here. So it says to grease the bottom of the pistons below the rings, not above the rings, not the cylinder, just the pistons. And that will keep uh, the scuffing to a minimum when breaking it in or upon startup, I'm guessing. So there we go, they're greased. Well, it slid on there pretty nice. Looking good. Time to bolt it down. Just running these down. Now I have to torque them. Looks like cylinder bolts are 38 to 46. Somewhere in there, huh? So that's the torque pattern. See, so you have the engine backwards. I'm gonna just spin that over. <laughs> 
and read it upside down. I torqued them all to 42. So they did send new O-rings for here, but they did not send what a new one for that. Clean her up, put that gasket in, put her together. So I ended up ordering some V-Force reeds for this. And I was just looking at installing them here. The green gasket goes to the inside. This gasket goes to the outside. You can see on my old reeds, that corner was broke. That corner broke. Definitely time to replace them. Brand new. Well, this is a three reed system versus the four reed. Okay, looks like I'm going to have to cut a bunch of zip ties. This one, this one, that one. It goes through that. It goes down here and hooks to a couple in that. So I did pour a little gold injection oil in there in each cylinder. Okay, so just mounted the exhaust Y pipe on there. Getting the old gasket off there was probably the most difficult. I see it's this top kit, minus three thousandths. They must have shaved her a little bit, huh? I did clean them and I checked the bellows. They're good. So I just took the fuel thing off. Can't forget these little green seals. I wasn't real good about taking videos when I took this apart, so I was trying to figure out how everything is. Going back through my photos and videos, and thank goodness I took them. And I'm, I put this oil line back up through there. This injector kind of came off, and I was trying to decide how it was routed, if it was going top or underneath or through there. It looks like it was through there. Still need to move this clamp. So yeah, just trying to figure out how everything lines up. I assume you know, that goes there. But I gotta route all this wiring and zip tie it all back where it was. But, uh, well, I don't know what the last I videoed, but I put this on, I put that bar on, put the clamp on, zip tied, zip tie, zip tie, zip tie. Route them between the gas lines. Oh, and I put the recoil on. I think it's ready to go in. Oh, it's in. <laughs> Thank you, Matthew, for helping wrestle this in here. Ah, the motor mounts are all started. He's just tightening up now. Put new motor mounts in. They were a little tighter than the old ones. Oh, you know what? We... Maybe we need to put this motor mount in before we get too far ahead of ourselves. Take the fun right out of the way, don't you? Yeah. Hoses to the water pump. Just hooked up the throttle cable. I'm gonna tighten that down now. You know, I'm not, I'm just not video very, taking enough video here. We put this box on, put those on. We just put this back on, put this nut on gas cap on snapped in there let's put some gas lines on and then snap them back in there put these all in tighten them up hooked up these hoses from the exhaust valves tighten these bolts up what else i do i don't know Okay, so I just stuck this plate in there. There's two two nuts there, two nuts there, down there. Uh, snap this hose clamp and her cable clamp there. Now I'm going to start plugging in my computer. Okay, put the tank back in there, filled it to the top. Put that bolt in, snap that in, put the bolt down in there in. Did some zip tie in. Now I'm going to put the exhaust in. Putting the springs on is always a lot of fun. I'm doing a little test to see if oil is draining out of that onto my clean paper. 
nothing yet. So I did put a, I rebuilt the clutch a little bit, put a mo new movable shim in there. I didn't show you that, put it all back together. Kind of got her back together. I have not started it yet. No shortage of smoke. That's a good sign. I want lots of oil in there for breaking in. Well, I'm going to run it through a few heat cycles. Get it up to temp, shut it off, get it up to temp, shut it off. Hopefully it was a success. Got 250 hours on it. 4,331 miles. Setting the end ring gap. On the RMK. Hey, there's one in. Them little circlips are a pain. So we're putting the spacer in there for the fix-it kit. So we can put longer pistons in. Or these are longer pistons. See the new pistons are a little longer. That's why you need the spacer and longer bolts. Add another gasket on top of that spacer. Time to put the mono block on. Huh? Yeah. Already turned up the oiler two and a half turns. So we just slid these on. Which one do we do first? We did the this one first because it was easier to get at and this steering post was in the way to have that one up to do that one first so did this one first slid her in there moved over it's down there on the gaskets and the spacer feels good so you mark this one as the second piston because you make side yeah Ring, ring gapped them to 19 thousandths. Yeah, and I ring gapped them separately on each cylinder. So these two rings are only gauged in this cylinder, these two rings are only gauged in that cylinder. And we got the arrow to the front to the exhaust side. All right. Put some bolts in, torque them down, torque pattern. Yeah, I checked. This is where the new bolts go because the old ones aren't long enough because of that spacer. Torquing them down to 42 is what we're doing. It said 30 to 44, 46. Yeah, 46. So we're, we're just going middle of the road. Matthew put a little film of oil on them cylinder walls. Looks good. The fact that it turns over is amazing. as you're torquing down the head cover. This right here is why. Let's get new pistons. Is that 3,000 miles? It's not, is it? 27 and a half. Okay. Oh, look at that. It's almost together. We're listening to Christmas music. It pulls hard. <laughs> I'm ready if you're ready.
another job where we just cross our fingers and hope it works. Ready? Yeah. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Woo! <laughs>